Please join me in reading the First Church Mission Statement. As disciples of Jesus and stewards of God's creation, we joyfully worship, faithfully serve, and generously give so lives may be transformed. Good morning and welcome to First Church of Christ in Suffield. We are glad that you are worshiping with us here today in the sanctuary and online with us on our live stream and later recorded on YouTube. And so we welcome you and we have a few announcements. Good morning. You saw me up here last week. Um, I'm going to kind of reiterate the two things I talked about last week. Our Going the Extra Mile this month goes to revitalize CDC in Springfield, Connecticut. Um, this is a group that helps homeowners who need some work, um, which they can't really do themselves. So it is something that we have been supporting for many years now. Along with that, we have a Revitalize CDC Workday, which is April 27th from 8 to 1. We have been given a house with which we're working on with three other groups. I encourage people to, if you are available or want to do something very much Jesus-like, to sign up. Anyone can do it. It takes, you have to have no specific skill. Um, they'll teach you how to do it. If not, it's just a nice collaboration with some other people who have um, a same belief as you. In addition to that, we also have um, Cathedral in the Night. I just noticed in what the witness that the date is wrong, so I'm going to double check the online witness. The weekend of the 27th and 28th is our busy weekend for missions. The 28th is Cathedral in the Night. So we're looking for people to sign up to provide food. We're looking for people to sign up to serve. Sign-ups can be two ways. Um, you can either sign up online or there are sheets in the gay room with which you can physically sign up. and. Amber checks those on Mondays and updates the online one as well. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me about either of those, all three things, the Going the Extra Mile Workday, CDC, and Cathedral in the Night. Um, please reach out and see me. Thank you. April, April 28th for Cathedral. Um, at one point, we thought it was the 21st. And I think that was in some of our minds. So I saw that in the 
printed witness that it's the 21st. I do need to double check to make sure it says the 28th with the online one, and I will reach out to Amber to make sure that everyone is aware it is April 28th, last Sunday of the month. Thanks. Thank you. And one more service type um, opportunity. The Hartford Association is a group of churches, so the United Church of Christ has the denomination, the national denomination, and then we have conferences, so we're in the Southern New England Conference, which is Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, and then we have the association, so we, this church is in the Hartford Association, which is 14 area churches, and it's the association that actually is the only part of the United Church of Christ that has any authority or power, and that authority is to ordain or to remove ordination. That's it. Um, and so, but we get together as churches, we meet. Um, Don and I this afternoon will be going um, for an ecclesiastical council because um, Eric Hurst has completed all of his uh, requirements for ordination and now he has to be, quote, tested. Um, and so we ask him questions about theology and things like that. But by the time you get to the ecclesiastical council, it's pretty much a done deal, but it's actually pretty exciting. So that's the Hartford Association. I'm the vice chair uh, with uh, Reverend Nicole Youngman, who's in First Church Windsor. And we are going, the Hartford Association is going to be doing a service trip, a mission trip for adults and children from six, or youth 16 to adults if, if they're accompanied by a parent. So 16, 17 year olds cannot come without a parent. Um, so it's mostly an adult trip. It will be a seacoast, uh, the main seacoast mission in Northeast Harbor, which is part of, um, what is it, Mount Desert Island, but it's like the quieter side of Mount Desert Island. We'll focus on home improvements um, for those who are most in need on the island. And so it will have eight hour work days with time for fellowship and reflection. The only skill is a willing heart because you can learn all kinds of things in that week time period. I love it because I can do so many home improvements now that I learned on service trips, which is great. Um, the, the Hartford Association is covering the cost. The only personal cost will be shared food and transportation, which will be cars, will be um, going by car and sharing rides. So it is August 4th through 9th, uh, so it's for, for almost a week. And if you're interested, have questions, um, see me, or call me, or text me, and they email me, and I can give you more detail. We will need to have a complete number by the, of those who are going by the end of May. Um, and I will, I plan to be going myself, so I hope to see a few of you there. Friends, no matter who you are, or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you believe a little, or you believe a lot, you are welcome here. If you doubt a little, or you doubt a lot, you are welcome here. If you're not certain what to believe, you are welcome here. Let us worship our loving God together. Please stand in body, mind, or spirit, and join me in the call to worship and the opening prayer. We are here in the name, the name of, of Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. So ask right now, and it, and it shall, shall be, given be given to you. To you. Seek right now, and you, and you will find. find. Knock right now, and, and the, the door, door will, be, will opened. be opened. O still speaking God, God. Throughout, Throughout history, history and the wide, wide world, world, you have, you have gathered, gathered people, people around, around your word to instruct, to instruct and, inspire. and inspire. We give thanks to all who have received your vision and shaped diverse and faithful communities to follow in your way. Continue to open that vision to us that we may be transformed by the renewing of your word in our hearts. Enable us to grow in love and understanding for each other. Create in us, O oh God, clean hearts and minds. Let us join with you in your suffering and your triumph. We desire to be your children 
and we claim these blessings in your name. Amen. It is the message for all ages, and we just have one tiny one. Um, Bobby, does Avery want to go to Hands on Faith, or she'll just stay here? Oh, she's in the... Okay. We will just keep going. I won't... Sometimes when we don't have children, we'll do the um, story in, for all ages anyway, um, but Don will be preaching on what I have had planned, so no need to repeat that. So we come now to a time of prayer, knowing that God has heard our prayers, but when we gather together as one people to celebrate our joys and to grieve together, we, we grow closer to each other and we grow closer to God. If you have a prayer, you can put it on a yellow card and you can put it in either of the offering plates, the gold offering plates, or you can always email or call Amber in the office. And then we have blue encouraging cards. You can find these in the pews as well. If you hear something or know of someone who could use a word of encouragement, you can write that down on the blue card. You can also put that in the offering plates and then Amber will um, put, mail them out during the week. So we have a few prayers, a few concerns. Gina D. this week is in short-term rehab after being hospitalized for a TIA, a mini stroke. Um, she is in rehab in Springfield. She welcomes cards mailed to her home and calls to her cell. So we will hold Gina in our prayers that she has a quick recovery. And then Ann B.'s friend and former roommate, Gisela, was diagnosed with leukemia three weeks ago. It's highly curable, and she's responding well to treatment um, and has a good prognosis. So we will hold her in our prayers, and may she um, know that she is strengthened by our prayers. And also, Ann has another friend, VG. Um, we pray for VG and her family on the death of her sister, Leela, after a long challenge with type 1 diabetes and several years of difficult complications. And so we will hold them in our prayers as well. And Barbara L., a friend of First Church at Suffield by the River, um, is asking for prayers for her family as her sister-in-law, Hattie, has died unexpectedly um, after a long life of 94, but it was not an expected passing. So we will hold Barbara and her family in our prayers. I continue to ask for friend, prayers for my friend Chris, who is waiting for a liver transplant at Mount Sinai in New York City. We pray for a humanitarian pause in the conflict in um, the Middle East so that basic necessities of food, water, medicine can reach the people of Gaza. Um, and we just pray for peace around the globe as war and conflict continues to escalate. Uh, we pray for our leaders across the globe, that they might have wisdom, that they might have 
um, peaceful intentions in mind, and so we hold that in our hearts. Joyce Mary Margaret T. will be 91 on May 6th, and so um, if you'd like to send her a birthday card, they can be sent to Suffield by the River in her name. And then a joy for the beauty of God's incredible creation of our solar system and the amazing eclipse this week. Uh, the greater beauty, though, was we actually brought together, what did they say, like, I don't know how many millions of people together for this tiny bit of time in our divided, uh, deeply divided country that we were able to come together and to share something on a deeply moving and spiritual um, event. And so we give God great um, thanksgiving for God's creation. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for today, for your goodness. You have given us beautiful days. You bless us richly with goodness. We thank you and we praise you. We live in a time of considerable confusion. We ask today for your wisdom as Solomon asked for wisdom. We are often fearful as was Solomon. We live in a time of peril, war, and world unrest. Different and competing interests strive for our attention and loyalty. Help us, O oh God, to pray for wise and discerning spirits. Give us wisdom to know good from evil. Give us wisdom to assess the clamoring voices and concerns with which we are daily bombarded. Give us wisdom so that we might learn to be accepting of all diverse people you have created. Give us wisdom to be peacemakers and mediators of understanding where there is conflict. Give us wisdom when we are in conflict to make it possible both for us and for those with whom we differ to save face and win and move forward hand in hand. Give us wisdom not to violate any of your creatures by discriminating against them. Give us wisdom to discern what is of ultimate value for our souls and to make wise choices. Together we ask, give us wisdom, give us discernment, give us the will to be faithful, give us the power to love. We bring the prayers that remain silently upon our hearts into this time of silence. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught his disciples these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. That was beautiful. Thank you. We also pray for the gift of music, the gift of song, and the, what it brings to our, our worship, which is just not words. And I was remiss in not um, praying for Don DeRose, who um, volunteered to be our, our lay preacher today. Um, we're grateful for all the words of wisdom that he will be sharing with us. And if anyone ever is interested in trying this preaching thing, please let me know. Um, I can walk you through the whole process and you are more than welcome. I'm more than welcome to share the pulpit and hear what you have to say. So um, don't be shy. It's not for everyone, but it is um, indeed a privilege to share God's word. So um, let me know if you're ever interested. We're going to mix it up a little bit. So I will do the Christian scripture first and then Don will read the Hebrew scripture and preach from the Hebrew scripture. We have Matthew chapter 7, 7 through 12. Let us listen for where God is speaking to us in these words. Ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there any among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to go give good gifts to your children, how much more will God in heaven give good things to those who ask? In everything, do to others, as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. These are holy words indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> now, the Hebrew scripture is taken from the book of Kings, the first chapter. It's interesting, there's a corollary or an echo in 2 Chronicles, um, chapter 1, verses 8 to 12, of that which I'm about to read uh, to you. In, um, Old Testament times, uh, dreams were one of the ways that God revealed God's will. In our reading today, the words of Solomon kind of reveal how kindly God dealt with Solomon's father, King David. And they also reveal a certain childlike humility in the way Solomon approached God in prayer. There's no doubt in my mind that Solomon had a spiritual experience. And the experience so moved him that after awakening from the dream, he went to Jerusalem and offered sacrifice to God and in a sense threw a party for all of his people. This is a reading from the first book of Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. 
He appeared in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you, and love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to come out or to go in. Your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered. Therefore, give your servant an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? And it pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and not asked for yourself a long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I also give you what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you walk in my ways, keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. Then Solomon awoke. It had been a dream. He came to Jerusalem where he stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. He offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being and provided a feast for all of his servants. In 1974, I attended a retreat at Holy Family Monastery in West Hartford a retreat that I made before being ordained as a Roman Catholic deacon by Archbishop John Whalen. At the retreat, I was asked to read this passage from Kings, to read it in a darkened chapel with only sanctuary spotlights on me. It felt surreal. It felt like I was part of Solomon's dream. Now, 50 years later, I am grateful to the Board of Deacons and Pastor Diane Bally for the chance to share my meditations and study over the years about one of my favorite scriptural passages. I am not going to share with you about my dreams. I will save you from that but I do want to share with you about wisdom. Wisdom is God-given and God-centered regarding the practical issues in life. It is a call to whom and what we will become in making the world a better place and letting God into it. It is a call to draw close, to show ourselves to God, in our world behind the world, that is, the world of our heart of hearts. 
everyone desires wisdom. By wisdom, I, I mean discernment, awareness, morality, intuition, observation, imagination, and common sense. I include that precious ability not to say something and to remain quiet. It is clear that wisdom is more than knowledge and more than intelligence. Knowledge identifies and lets us see things. Wisdom teaches us how to handle and to use what we know with the ability to communicate it verbally and non-verbally. Wisdom is a practical virtue. Wisdom is a skill that makes our knowledge and thoughts useful and helpful. It is like an old friend that we know that has been nurtured over time. Scripture portrays wisdom as developmental, mostly because scripture is a living gift. There's no single way to understand it. Our spiritual forebears oriented wisdom around the life of virtue and love of God. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom is personified as a woman who has much to offer anyone who would hear her words. Wisdom reveals God to God's people. The book of Psalms, Proverbs, Job, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, portray wisdom. The apocryphal books, the wisdom of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, Sirach, embody wisdom. While these books are not considered inspired and outside the canon of scripture, they are full of wisdom and spirituality. The vision of comfort and wisdom in these books give a dynamic expression to the depths of the faith of God's people. I am really thankful God inspired people to write and preserve these books. The emotions that are contained in them, the instructions, even the frustrations that are represented in these writings. In the 10th century BCE, wisdom peaked in King Solomon. His reputation grew as a wise administrator, organizer, and man of sound judgment. Christian scriptures portray wisdom around the person of Christ, who is the author of all spiritual gifts. The Christian scriptures describe Jesus as wisdom. In fact, Jesus is wisdom personified. Jesus invites us to live the wisdom of the gospel. We are told that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That wisdom is also the source of wisdom for the Christian community as well as for our individual lives. The epistle of James is the clearest example of wisdom literature in the Christian scriptures. Wisdom is also clustered in Matthew, 1 Corinthians, and Colossians. According to St. Paul, Jesus is the wisdom from God. The wisdom from God is also made known through the church and the lives who have passed. Here in our church, God's wisdom shapes our lives in local fellowship and in mission work. Evidence of wisdom exists in our lives. We as parents try to teach our children the art of reality living. 
We do not do that perfectly, but we endeavor to invoke reality, to experience it, and to find words to express all of its mystery, its marvels, and its cautions. We are so grateful when our children show good judgment and wisdom in their lives. As we seek wisdom, we are promised the help and closeness of God. In fact, God dwells in us as a future member. <laughs> we see the heights of wisdom to which we can ascend are really unlimited because God is unlimited. We map out rules and morality by which we guide our lives with prudence and moderation, with work, level-headedness, humility, love, and loyalty. And it's really interesting to see the entire ethic of the Ten Commandments pass under the umbrella of wisdom. Solomon asked for God for wisdom. He received a double dose. What is strength without a double dose? If we also define wisdom as God-centered skill in making thought result in proper action, there's a very real place and a rich place for wisdom in the future of our world. Ditnach Han said, I quote, wisdom is a living stream, not an icon preserved in a museum. Only when we find the spring of wisdom in our own lives can it flow to future generations, unquote. The human mind is a palette of extremes. We unconsciously harbor things that can influence our choices, making them difficult, causing us to act impulsively. Moses exemplified this when he selected judges from each Hebrew tribe with whom he collaborated, rendering decisions in difficult and even in ordinary cases. For us, consulting with a trusted friend, a spiritual companion, a mentor or counselor can sometimes help us understand the ramifications of our experiences and choices. It's a complicated world out there. We can always pass the counsel of our friends through our own mind and reason filters. And, and let us not forget the wisdom we gain from our daily experiences and life circumstances, painful as those experiences might be. Wisdom often is not seen when we start out doing something, but is clearly seen looking backwards over our actions. The care that we employ making decisions allows us to practice wisdom in our daily lives. Wisdom is also the median through which we gain understanding of ourselves and of the world and of history. I love the word serendipity. It's the gift of finding valuable or agreeable things not looked for. Those certain encounters between people or from books for our hobbies, for our children, where a spark jumps out to us when that spark is helpful, it leads us changed. When change happens for the better, everyone benefits. My own wisdom tells me those are enough words for this morning. I do want to leave you with a few closing thoughts. Like Solomon, ask for wisdom from God. Either the divinity or the universe will give it to you gladly. My wish for you is to be spiritually zealous about seeking wisdom from any source. 
my wish for you is to seek wisdom as a great treasure. May it call out to you, and may you hear its voice loudly and clearly, even though it appears as a gentle, still, small voice in our lives. And may you have a double portion of it, part for you and the rest for others. Thank you, Dan, for those wise words. We come now to a time of offering, knowing that we have been blessed in so many ways. And so we gather our time and our talent and our treasure to support the church and the ministries. We will not pass the plate, but you can put your offerings in one of the gold plates on either exit, um, or you can give online um, through Vanco or PayPal, or you can mail your checks into the church. So please stand for the doxology.
as we leave this place and go into the world, ask for wisdom from God. May you be spiritually zealous about seeking wisdom from any source. May you seek wisdom as a great treasure. May it call out to you and may you hear its voice loudly and clearly. May it gift you with a wise and understanding heart and guide your steps in all you do and in all your days. Amen.
Um, I really